greetings of the day everyone uh, this is your lecture for capf 2024 that is the learnings for capf 2024 from cds 1 2024 now why is this lecture happening because the cds 1 2024 paper came slightly above and beyond what it used to come in the previous years and the paper of cds and cpf have been very similar over the past few years pa- over a long time and you should be doing upsc allied exams other exams of upsc before your cpf exam so that you can understand the aptitude and the mindset of the examiner in the cpf exam that is why we are doing this session so that we can understand what is going on in the mind of the examiner in 2024 because there has been a significant change we will be discussing that change in a bit and we will be seeing i'll be also be taking some questions let us start so the cds exam was on 21st of april 2024 and the capf for us is scheduled on 4th of august 2024 that is as per the official upsc calendar now from 10th may whatever day you are watching as of 10th may there are 85 days left that is about 12 weeks so 12 weeks for the capf is a reasonably good time to prepare and cover any weaknesses to change our course and direction to improve something to understand something more that is we are able to change there is not we are not like very close within one month or one and a half month we have the exam that we are not able to change the aim but what the aim but what we are trying to do is we have 12 weeks to cover this so what are the target students for this particular lecture it will be that all the cpf aspirants for 2024 should watch this this is my personal session i will like to introduce myself i have cleared uh, cpf 2023 written and previously also and a uh, cds i have cleared ample number of times with scores as high as 190 for the ima cutoff and for the ota cutoff uh, i usually score somewhere between 125 to 130 so i am a good person i think on both the exams uh, to help you assist you to understand both the exams and the correlation between them and let us go ahead so what is in this lecture discussion on learnings from the cds paper how it was subject wise sources relevant i'll be discussing on some new sources that you can follow because we have 12 weeks so yes some for some subjects yes you can go for some new sources but not for all i'll be discussing the conditions as we come to this section change in aptitude and practice now this is the most important section and we will be taking some questions on this about 15 questions or something like that to explain to you the process and how to think in the exam this will be more helpful for the beginners because uh, i have uh, i have found that the beginner aspirants uh, lack the proper aptitude to approach the question whereas candidates who have cleared cpf previously they understand more or less what is needed but still i think uh having experience of clearing these exams multiple number of times the written segments i will be a good guide and i hope i'll be able to uh, help you and assist you in this what to do now is a last segment that is what can we do within the 12 weeks please note that this is not a solution video it is a strategy video i'm i'm not going to take all the 120 questions and discuss each and everything no it is a strategy video for cpf 2024 so this video will will be not very short it will be somewhat around an hour or maybe a bit less so you can you can uh, schedule your timing as per that and you can also watch at an increased playback speed i have also been asked uh, to introduce a bit of hindi now i don't mind hindi but the exam is in english medium the especially the paper 2 and to be honest i am not very comfortable uh, with proper formal hindi uh, for lecture basis so i will be uh, saying a few things in hindi but no i can't do the entire lecture in hindi medium itself so i'm sorry for that and for the issue or technical issues of pen color and voice i hope it is all right by now okay let us come to the learnings first we'll be talking on the question trend 
that is increase in the number of statements and length of the paper overall the cds paper was very lengthy this time the number of statements in each question were like two three like two or three statement questions and even four statements like it was terribly long it was longer to read to understand and to eliminate so that is why that was the first thing so the capf 24 paper can also is also expected to be very long so more specific questions than than generic questions now this is an irony of upsc i'll also explain again the irony they play with us that the questions are more specific but to solve the specific questions you need general knowledge I'll be coming on this in a bit downstairs once we move ahead. To solve more specific questions, you need more generic knowledge. And to solve the generic questions, it's just pure, more specific or more static knowledge you'll be needing. It is the other way around. Yeah, but I'll explain you better with the questions. Next is moving away from NCRT to other new sources. Yes, until now, the CAPF and the CDS, both papers were very close to the NCRT. I remember a few years ago, uh, the questions from the NCRTs, from history specifically, were just verbatim copy-paste or from the uh, description or a box or just copying statements across from various NCRTs and putting them away. But the 2024 is a strong exception to that. They are There are questions, I'll when I come on the subject-wise trend, I'll be discussing from where the NCRT is still relevant, from where it is not relevant. But yeah, there is a significant shift away from the NCRTs. Next is the increase in toughness and closeness of the options. The options have become more tough. The placement of the options is uh, slightly tricky and more trap based. So that is one thing the aspirant has to take clear of. And also the type of options which came in the civil services 2022 paper it was introduced and heavily brought in the civil services 2023 that was how many of the above statements are correct so this is the new pattern of how many above statements are correct two only three only and this has somewhat eliminated elimination yes that is true but still there are some ways around for it depending on the question to question i'll be coming on that but yes overall it is both a plus and a minus thing. We just have to adapt ourselves to to this kind of pattern of questions and we'll be okay with it. So it is nothing to be very much scared about that elimination is eliminated or something like that. No, we will just change our mindset. We will adapt ourselves to it and we'll go ahead. And in the CDS paper, there were only few questions, uh, less than 10% from this above, uh, how many of the above statements are correct? This kind of questions. That is one only, two only, three only. But... Uh, CAPF 2024 will be seeing such questions for sure that is no doubt on that but the question of these sort are going to rise so if you are preparing for 2025 26 or you have more attempts left after 2024 then I think you should take a significant or take time to have a look at these kind of questions no subject wise until few years ago the questions were very categorized that is all the questions from one particular subject came at once at together that is not the case this year and even the last cds the 2023 september one that one also saw some mix up of questions so the questions are getting mixed up 2024 cap if you can expect the questions will be mixed up you can't expect that if the first question is of physics then the next 10 questions will be of the same subject no the next can be of history, polity, environment. It can go around and round. Then next is the reduction in defense questions. Yes, CDS and the CAPF both have a knack for asking defense because that is the job you are going for. Uh, CAPF is paramilitary, but still, defense did play a major part. But this year and the previous paper too, uh, we saw that the number of questions for defense has significantly reduced. And this year, I think maybe two questions have come. Previously, there were about five to six of them at least. The old trend of verbatim about us pages is the same. What is this about us pages? As a new aspirant, you might not be knowing. The about us trend is that the UPSC takes the about us page of any international body. I'll be taking a question on that below. Or maybe a statute of the body like the International uh, Court of Justice and then they will copy paste the verbatim statement from there and then they'll ask you if it is right or wrong 
and then they might manipulate the statement to make it wrong and that keeps on going so it is from the about us pages this year they have taken it directly from the statute of the icj they have taken it from the udhr articles so it is the same trend okay but the about us pages no they have gone more so it's completely the same the old trend of math is the same and now i'm speaking strictly with the prism of the capf ac exam i'm not speaking entirely from the perspective of the cds exam yes the math has gone tougher and tougher each year uh the good candidates or the uh, faster people who are more adaptive they do proceed faster in such questions but if i speak with respect to the capf exam only which is our aim here uh it has not changed much and i don't think we'll be expecting any significantly harder questions or any brand new type of questions but yeah you can give it a solve let us move to the next segment subject wise math not much change from cds math history there is a strongest upgrade in terms of sources uh, and the biggest jerk history is gone very very tough this time lots of the questions were skippable that is you have to skip it because you might not be knowing it and it's very hard to take a guess there i'll be explaining some of the questions below on how we can take a guess but yes there is a significant risk factor involved uh geography environment some ncert questions some factual ones and many conceptual now ncert questions yes you can do as a capf aspirant you must have surely completed the cf ncert no doubt factual questions are hard this time they are on directly on what is the uh, biosphere reserve or the wildlife sanctuary matching so those are hard and even a lakshadweep coconut question was very very hard so those questions they are uh, hard to attend whereas the ncert questions like on the barrier islands and the clouds uh, drainage types these are very simple and conceptual questions like the gateway question that is nowhere mentioned in the ncert but if you read the question yes you might you might very as well do the question so there were some conceptual questions which could have been done they are okay like you need a bit of aptitude you'll go through it polity is abstract and thought questions rather than lakshmikant facts now lakshmikant you need to study okay this does not mean you stop studying lakshmikant you need to study the lakshmikant you need to study your ncert but the abstract and thought related questions have increased significantly this year and i don't see any normal questions on a judge being uh, re- uh, like removal of a judge question or something like a president or a emergency law something very basic static part of the polity that is not being asked this year and similarly we can expect for the capf but polity you cannot ignore you need to cover the static part too along with the abstract and theory i believe ncert will be the best thing for abstract and theory other than that uh, the return on investment that is the roi is not going to be very good next is economy microeconomics one question came that is the graph based question very hard very tough and that is something which i would not expect the cpf aspirants to go very deep because macroeconomics itself is very big for us to cover going into microeconomics and attempting such different questions is not the photo you need to know the microeconomics just the basics of it you can understand the demand supply and what is the relation between them and some elasticity kind of factors but no don't go too deep into the graphs and the moving no that is not needed it is better to invest your energy in macroeconomics economy there was a wide variety of questions aptitude related questions uh, about 10% 21% i'll come on that so economy was uh, very wide this time they did not stick to the economic survey entirely like they have been doing in the past few years so yes economy has gone very wide we'll discuss on that next is the core sciences core sciences physics chemistry and math physics yes hard and new questions out of the ncert and some controversial ones too and some very direct questions on like wavelength uh, values they have given directly uh, there was a geography wavelength and they have given us the weight of a higgs boson that is a 100 giga electron volt is the answer for that so they have asked very new questions from modern and quantum physics that is electron proton muon and many more questions uh, gmrt the giant meter radio wave telescope so yes the questions have moved towards modern and quantum physics we will be discussing from where to do them chemistry is the usual trend from the ncert from class 11th and 12th it is not very hard 
it is reasonable 10th uh, 11th ncrt has to be done very properly for that biology uh, sorry no comments on biology because biology is not my specialization or forte and i have seen the questions i have seen their answers but i am in no position to make a comment on their trend current affairs is easier than last time cds 2 2023 had a very very hard current affairs very hard ones very old current affairs uh, whereas the cds 124 did not have a lot of current it had it had current affairs but the current affairs were more related towards the static part and you could have solved it and even the current affairs which they asked purely from the sake of current affairs they were very solvable very easy vipo question and the question on swachh sarvekshan indigenous assault rifle operation sarva shakti these questions were very straightforward very easy to mark i mean it was easy but cpf uh, i don't think much change uh, we can expect in the pattern uh, yogesh singh uh, uh, gold medal in asian championship now that is something you need to know no, not only in the asian championship but also on the sports front itself i'll be discussing that uh, discussing on that what are the sources now let us come to the sources history this time all all the questions of ancient india were from upinder singh sir's book uh, he is a very good professor very strong book by pearson publications that is the source of all the questions and all the medieval questions were verbatim copy paste from irfan habib sir's book that is uh that is an nbt the national book trust uh, copy on medieval india that does not mean you go around and grab this book and read it yourself no the return on investment will be, will be very poor now instead of doing these two books as a capf aspirant what you should do my suggestion is go and read the tamil nadu ncrt if you have done the uh, basic ncrts uh, not the uh, this will be an scrt actually yeah the, the the tamil nadu state history books that is what i mean to say if you have done the ncrts properly they were good enough for cpf 22 23 but they are not going to be good enough for cpf 24 you need a more holistic more general idea of history and you can get that from tamil nadu state history textbooks upinder singh i might suggest to a very to an aspirant who has been in the preparation for a longer duration of time and who has the time in these 12 weeks to go through some selected chapters of upinder singh the pdf is available i think online i'm not sure so yeah you can try upinder singh on some topics maybe something very important if you if you analyze the capf papers of previous year questions and you can identify some hit areas like maurya dynasty gupta dynasty some of those hit areas which are being asked very frequently in the capf maybe you can read that particular chapter in the upinder singh textbook now don't go around reading the entire upinder singh because that is not possible i mean that is for someone who is studying history as a subject in itself we are studying to clear the exam that is our main aim here so our main aim is fulfilled by tamil nadu uh, state history textbooks i believe they cover most of it properly in a very uh, in a very tact manner in a very easy manner to understand the chronology because i'll be discussing the history few of the history questions below you need to have a more general knowledge generic knowledge than going about learning some very different facts which no one might have heard of the return of investment is not very good we'll try to eliminate a few options by chronology by understanding and we'll try i mean if it is hard for us it is hard for everyone and if it is hard then the cut off will go down so you don't need to worry that you are getting the same marks as last time as a candidate myself i have seen my marks go up and down in various cds and capf exams but relatively compared to other candidates i performed very well that is why i cleared the exam so many times geography yes the pmf is physical geography is a textbook you can cover because i feel okay i feel now this is my personal opinion that the ncrt might not be sufficient this year or next year because as the exam is evolving and progressing the ncrt will no longer be the only source we are already seeing that in history in polity in economy so history uh, so and we have to graduate from the ncrt some day or the other so the pmfis physical geography book 
हार्ड कॉपी इज अ गुड सोर्स आई फाउंड फॉर कवरिंग जोग्राफी इन अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल वेरी पिक्टोग्राफिक मैनर इट इज़ वेरी ईजी टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड रीड प्रोवाइडेड यू हैव अ साउंड एन सी आर टी अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड दी द पी एम एफ आई एस बुक कवर्स दी एन सी आर टी बाई इट सेल्फ सो यू डोंट नीड टू वरी दैट यू विल लूज आउट ऑन द नॉलेज और यू हैव टू स्टडी समथिंग एक्स्ट्रा इट इज़ दी एग्जैक्ट सेम थिंग फॉर पॉलिटी यू नीड लक्ष्मीकांत एंड एन सी आर टी देर इज़ नो चेंज ऑन दैट वी विल ट्राई आर बेस्ट टू सॉल्व द क्वेश्चन दैट सेट देर इज़ नो नीड ऑफ एनी चेंज साइंस येस करेंट अफेयर्स कंपाइलेशन एंड सेल्फ नोट्स ऑन लेटेस्ट टॉपिक्स लाइक ऑन मॉडर्न एंड क्वांटम फिजिक्स एंड सो वेर डू यू गेट दिस देर इज अ वेरी फेमस मीन्स थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव कंपाइलेशन एंड ऑल्सो प्रिलिम्स थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव कंपाइलेशन यू कैन ओपन दम अप फॉर द पास टू ईयर्स टू टू थ्री ईयर्स यू कैन ओपन दम अप फ्रीली अवेलेबल यू कैन सर्च दिस वर्ल्ड एंड यू विल गेट इट सो यू ओपन दम अप यू रीड द टॉपिक्स आई एम नॉट सिंग यू मग दम अप नो you read the topics you understand what is the concept they have given very good infographics you can learn those infographics so that you have a basic idea and understanding of these new things that's all and you need to prepare your own notes you can't rely here and there on coaching because science is something which uh, which we are mostly able to do from basic logic from understanding of the world around us but as we go to modern and quantum physics we won't be able to do that so we need a proper understanding of these next is current affairs monthly pdf and daily newspaper no need of change from it current affairs is not much change daily newspaper is important both from paper 1 and paper 2 perspective for paper 2 i have already taken four sessions on uh, inclusive of essay report writing and the uh, report writing and the arguments so you can visit them and understand the importance of the daily newspaper and how to attempt them next is the aptitude and practice this is a trailer okay basically the cds paper is a trailer for you for all the other upsc exams each paper is a trailer for the other one paper will be significantly harder please mark my words the paper of 2024 will be significantly harder why because until a few years ago uh, because until last year or maybe 2022 the uh, capf cds cgs all the allied exams of the upsc used to run 2 to 3 years behind the civil services in terms of format and the type and the toughness of questions and suddenly within one year they have jump the cds exam has jumped a gap of 3 to 4 years so that is why we are feeling the paper is very hard and i expect a similar jump in the capf exam also so that is why this is my prediction okay this is personal opinion please don't hold me if this comes out to be false and i try to discuss some aptitude strategy and some questions here yes the generalist attitude is much much more needed than the specialist knowledge over here which i explained to you in the starting yes because a generalist attitude is what is going to help you Uh, help you to approach the question in a more open oriented manner because our aim here is to score marks i'll be very honest with you our aim here is not only to gain basic knowledge of the subject but our main aim a more important aim would be to score the marks because that is what is going to give us the uh, opportunity to to give the physical exam to give an interview to get the job which we all are trying very hard for so what to do now what to do now is you solve the cds 2 2023 paper you solve the cds 2024 paper yourself after the first revision of subjects you start with the new sources if you have studied it some somewhere somehow but don't have a proper book to follow suppose you have prepared ncrts you can go to tamil nadu history you have prepared geography from the ncrts you can move to a slightly upgraded source but i'm not saying you go for all the subjects no one to two subjects which you are comfortable with that's all because you have only 12 weeks left you don't have all the time in the world but if you are preparing for 2025 then please do it you need to improve you need to be ahead of others current affairs is moving more on sports you need to study the ancient championship you need to study the saff championship you need to study the uh cricket uh, ch- uh world cup upcoming or the last one uh, i mean you need to be update with the current affairs in sports also the number of questions in sports is gaining tracked 
since 2021 and yes so we are uh, so we can expect some good questions on sports this year so please prepare sports very well within the current affairs this is a subject or a minor topic which many of us ignore please do not do that focus more on aptitude to solving question and static part of the syllabus than current affairs yes current affairs is an unending ocean and our focus should be on solving the question uh, and focusing on the static part of the syllabus which does not change year to year because we clear the exam basis of the static part of the syllabus not on the basis of current affairs because if you clear the exam this year by current affairs next year you will have to work the exact amount of hard the same time to clear the exam again whereas a person who has prepared the static part in depth he or she will be able to clear the exam every year it's nine o'clock now this ends the first segment of this lecture now you should proceed from the video of this video only if you have cleared the cds if you have solved the cds paper by yourself and for the cds paper any score above 40 in this paper is respectable please make sure there are 120 questions so each question is of 0.83 marks you can divide it accordingly so it is not plus 2 minus 2 by 3 so yeah you have to uh, you have to score 40 plus this is for a UR candidate, okay? This is not, not for other candidate. For UR candidate, you need to score 40 plus at least if you are expecting something good and a better score will be somewhere around 46. That is what is my estimate. Obviously, this is not a CDS cutoff or anything I'm predicting. I'm just saying that this is how you should judge yourself. Now, let us move ahead. I'll, I'll, I'm not going to read the entire questions and explain the solution. My aim here is to just help you to understand the aptitude to solve the question and to move ahead. Like I said in the starting, this is not a solution video. This is a strategy video. So I'm going to discuss strategy. So this is about Madurai. It has been described in a particular book, a large grand city enclosed by Vegai River. Arthashastra mentions as a fine cotton textile, describe it as a major craft center. Now, you need to understand that Arthashastra did mention of southern India. That is what we know from our static sources. So, Arthashastra mentioning about Madurai, okay, it seems true. I, I have not read about this particularly anywhere, but yes, it seems true. And if the second statement is true, it is a center of fine, fine cotton textile, then it can be a craft center also. And this is a very open generic statement, statement number three. So statement number three will be true. It is a very open generic statement. So if three is true, then automatically true is true from the options. So now we are between C and D. Now please understand one rule. This is my personal rule, okay? My personal rule. Whenever you are in a 50-50 situation, that is, you have eliminated two options, sure shot, without any doubt, okay? You have to attempt the question, whether you know it or not. Why? Because you have a 50% chance of getting it correct. And by the law of averages, if you attempt at least five to six questions of this 50-50, you will be scoring a net positive marks. So that is the entire aim. So if this is a 50-50 and you are not able to decide, then you mark any of them but i will try to apply more logic vegai river vegai river flows in south india it flows in tamil nadu it flows above tamiraparni river and it flows below kaveri river now this is something we know from indian geography ncrt textbook now if vegai river which is very close to madurai madurai is on vegai river we all know that yeah, but I'm I'm helping you understand that Vegai is in South India. You can recall this in exam. This is not a very hard fact to recall. So yes, this can be true about Madurai. So I'll go with option D and that will be the answer. Why? Because the examiner is not going to take effort to change the name of this book. He's not going to go and search other name and copy paste it here. And even if he does, the name of the book will be something very famous like Silapadi Karam or Mani Meghlai if he wants to change the question. So and it itself mentions the word Madurai. So why not? So it's, it looks good. 
we go with one two three that is the answer and that is the correct answer i have checked it up so okay next is uh, consider the following statements about this is a verbatim copy from irfan habib sir's book now how one approaches this in exam is he learned the accuracy of european observation la hair tables which reproduced a refraction table okay this sounds okay i don't know anything about this okay it's fine but his astronomers also develop a telescope now this is where my eyes rise up why you're talking about medieval india and you're talking about a telescope okay to observe the lunar phases of venus now as an examiner you can change the word venus very easily you can change you can introduce a telescope which might not be relevant you can talk about refraction table without using a telescope also so that's fine but yeah venus can be changed very fast telescope also was introduced very late and mostly by the european side not very easily used in india not very uh, early usage in india so the statement 2 goes wrong statement 1 looks right why does it look right now you will be thinking why does it look right it looks right because it looks like it is a copy paste from a particular book it now this is not hind, this is not hindsight okay this is actual in the exam i know candidates who have used this logic to solve it in the exam so it is something you can think in the exam it is not very hard it is hard, it comes with practice but yeah it is something you can do it is possible it looks like it is taken from a book the examiner will not take the effort to change it so the option will be a one only this is how we approach the question if you can solve and understand by static that's it as much as like i told in vegai i told about arthashastra talking about south india you you try to think about it this is the generalist knowledge which you are using to solve a specific question that is what i have spoken about political and normative and empirical approach now here it is actually uh, this is a swapping question okay the examiner has swapped the words empirical and normative once you swap them it comes correct so the answer is d you should be uh, you you don't need to know about political analysis you just need to know about the word empirical and you need to know about the word uh, normative so that is the thing and uh, then uh, next is the udhr udhr yes udhr question this is also verbatim like i told it is a verbatim copy from the actual actual like the actual udhr book uh, the sorry the udhr uh, human right declaration the charter itself has this this is uh, from article 14 the first statement and the second is article 15 of the udhr article 14 and article 15 of the udhr so the answer is c that is both of them that is all right but how do we see this in exam the declaration provides because in the exam udhr is something you have to read okay please read it for capf 2024 do not leave it it is very important read the original text it is some 3 to 4 pages you can do it in no time not very hard the declaration provides that everyone has a right to seek and enjoy in other in other countries asylum from prosecution in respect of political crimes now this is something you can try to relate how rohingyas uh, uh, dalai lama is there uh, edward snowden uh, case is there not poli- uh, political crimes or you are thrown out you are in asylum i mean you have to think of some asylum cases which you have heard and you can relate with that yes you can go and you have uh, the declaration provides everyone has the freedom from arbitrary deprival the word arbitrary is important yes you can be deprived of your nat- nationality but arbitrary is an issue like i think rohingyas were deprived and except and they were also who oh, no that is another case okay except for the freedom to change nationality yeah if you if you change your nationality you become an american citizen tomorrow you automatically lose your indian citizenship so that is all right so it sounds good it is c both one and two next is this question if india enters into an fta with other nations which w- then the growth of exports exports would depend on which of the following now upon reading all these five statements these all five statements look good you may not be in the exam you may not be able to directly relate each and every statement to the growth of export that is completely fine 
दैट इज़ कम्प्लीटली फाइन ओके बट इन सच क्वेश्चन इन सच क्वेश्चन द आंसर इज गोइंग टू बी ऑल दी अबाव नाउ वाई एम आई सेंग दिस वाई द रीज़न इज बिकॉज द एग्जामिनर इज नॉट गोइंग टू गो अबाउट एंड सर्च फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर फैक्टर विच साउंड पॉजिटिव बट इज नॉट अ फैक्टर फॉर द ग्रोथ ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट एंड सो दैट इज़ द मेन रीजन हैड इट गिवन समथिंग विच इज़ एंटायरली नेगेटिव then yes you could have cross uh, cross out that option but after reading all the five they all look positive to me so there's nothing with that next is which one of the following is not correctly matched now these are wildlife sanctuaries okay these are not national parks as a capf aspirant uh, there are 106 national parks you should be knowing at least at least 70 to 80 of them and especially the new ones you might forget 10 15 20 of them it's all right but you should have read them at least once and there are more than 500 wildlife sanctuaries now you can't go around matching which is for which one the answer is a it's in j and k yes but you can't go around knowing that there is nahar wildlife sanctuary in haryana or the kane in arunachal pradesh so that is something very hard and these kind of questions you should skip in the exam you should not try to attempt them using any logic or anything no please do not which one of the following is an important early chola painting discovered in the temple so this is a mural painting in the brihadeshwara temple now we all know that uh, cholas were devotees of lord shiv so the answer should be shiv buddha will never be a, will not be an answer because cholas did not support uh, did not like provide lot of patronage to buddhas parshavnath yes early cholas did provide some patronage to jains yakshi kali is no very relevant here yakshi yakshini they were all during the maurya time like the yakshini of didar ganj we have all read in the ncert shiv is the answer you see brihadeshwar you see chola and you go for shiv this is something which you have to attempt in the exam which one of the following industries was most affected by deindustrialization now all of them were affected by deindustrialization we have read about the economic impact but which of them was mostly answer is cotton textiles this is something which you may not find verbatim in the ncert but you need an overall generalist understanding which one of the following is the first commercial space station now axiom station okay you may have read about it you may not have read about it it's okay international space station is since a long time since the 80s at least so it is not uh, the first inter- uh, first commercial space station it is a government station Galileo and Voyager one, they were satellites. They were not even space stations. So the answer is A. Directly you come by elimination. This is a very good question of physics. On a day when I am in a hurry to go to office, I have fixed a quantity of rice. You have read this question by basic reading. You would have eliminated A and D. Now we are left between B and C. This is a question. on newton's law of cooling that is higher the delta higher the gap between the room temperature and the temperature of the rice that is your answer now assuming now this is somewhere we assume that the room temperature is 25 degree centigrade so at room temperature at 25 and let us assume your cooked rice was at 60 degree so 60 minus 25 35 degrees is the delta here but if you start at 23 of an ac it is 37 so the higher delta is your answer the table fan is at slow speed and is at full speed this has no impact on the question this is given to confuse you why because the slower high speed has no impact on the on the difference of temperature the difference of temperature 35 37 it remains the same irrespective of your speed of fan so what does the fan do the fan helps in the convection the faster the convection is because of the faster speed of the fan so th- the answer is b this is something which will require aptitude in the exam you need to think on the feet you don't need to be scared if you are scared in the exam you will commit mistake in this kind of question you won't be able to approach it in the correct manner this is an about us page uh, question which i explained marakesh partnership was a long time ago 
but these three statements are verbatim from their about us page so it goes by three now how do you do this in exam you read the statement you find that they you, that they are interrelated to each other they collaborate each other and uh, many of the candidates who score 50 50 plus marks in the cds paper gk paper they are able to understand that they these three are from the same passage and this is a typical about us question and nothing looks wrong in this so uh, you can proceed with the option c that is one two and three and i have discussed this paper with many of the cds toppers and uh, candidates who don't write the who don't go for the next stages of the cds exam but do attempt it with very high accuracy and uh, i have seen what kind of approach they are taking and I have also done uh, the paper myself so I understand that yes it is very much possible to do these things in the exam after practice and not only CDS we have to do this in the CPF exam too. Uh, International Court of Justice question this also I spoke about now this is from the actual statute this is from article 5 and this is from article 4 the second statement is from article 4 now what the examiner has done. The examiner has taken from the about us, I call these type of questions about us questions because they are directly taken from the website and this is not something you will find in your notes. In your notes, maybe you might have read about ICJ being a UN body and nine year term and they re-elect every three years and you might have read all that. But you would not have read about the General Assembly and the Security Council doing this together. No, this is nowhere. No aspirant has done this. Okay. But how do you approach this question? That is what I'm here to explain. This is not a solution video. I'm going to explain you the approach. The approach is the court consists of members wherein two members cannot be national of the same state. Now this looks logical to me. Why? Because if there are more than two members from the same state, all the nine or ten members are from suppose one nation like Egypt, then they will start giving judgments which are very biased. So you can't have two members from the same state. Now this looks logical to me. So let statement one be correct. Now the General Assembly and the Security Council, these are both UN bodies, okay, UNGA, UNSC, proceed independently of one another to elect member of the court. Now all the while, over the years, over your general knowledge, you understand that the UNGA and UNSC almost all times work together. Or if not work together, they have the same agenda because they are on the same uh, same UN body. The UNSC is more specialized towards security. The GA does all the things. So you are able to understand that if they go independently of one another and they are appointing a member of the UN ICJ, then it does not sound logical to me. So they will be dependent on one another. They will take their consensus. It is very all right if more parties uh, take consensus or give a unanimous decision so the second statement is wrong the answer is a1 only and you can read from the verbatim article number four from the statute of icj but now i don't suggest that you go and read the statute of all the un bodies no that is a very poor uh, rate of uh, return on interest next is the economy question this is a very good question where you have to understand this is basically a csat involved with the sorry not the CSA there is a math question involved within the economy question so the price index captures the change in average price of the constant basket of commodities yes you know CPI you know WPI you know about them so this is a true statement you know it from your static knowledge NCRT also has mentioned that okay and then uh, if the price index takes values 100 110 121 then the inflation rates now the inflation rate is taken on a year on year basis this is something you read in the economic survey always in the economic survey you would have read YOY that is the in year on year uh, in, uh, percentage so if the first year it is 100 let me take a bar chart it is 100 second year it is 110 that is a 10 percent growth so the first part is correct the third year it is a hundred and twenty one so from the hundred ten to the hundred twenty one the jump from hundred ten to hundred twenty one is hundred twenty one minus hundred ten divided by hundred ten 
हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी वन माइनस हंड्रेड टेन डिवाइडेड बाय हंड्रेड टेन नाउ दैट कम्स आउट टू बी योर हंड्रेड परसेंट टेन परसेंट सो द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ ट्वेंटी वन परसेंट इज रॉन्ग सो द आंसर इज ए वन ओनली क्लियर दीज आर टू क्वेश्चन आई वॉन्ट टू शो फ्रॉम हिस्ट्री विच यू शुड नॉट टच इन दी एग्जाम Who among the following was not a court poet of King Krishna Dev Raya? Now we know Ashtadiggaj. You might have read. You might have also read about some of the uh, members from the Krishna Dev Raya's court. But it is very hard to read about and recall about Durjati, Mallana, Timmana. These are very hard to recall in exam. Siddheshwara. Now Siddheshwara. Also is very hard to recall in exam because this is part of the Bhakti Sufi chapter. It is part of the Lingayats, Siddheshwara. So the answer is Siddheshwara. But if you see this kind of question and you have no clue about all the four options, please skip. Do not go for blind guesses. That is going to cost you heavily. The royal portraits of Sima Vinshu and Mahendra Varman are found in which cave temple at Mammalpuram? You know. the pallavas you know about them uh, being in mammalpuram their capital but asking their portraits are in which particular cave this is something which no aspirant would know unless someone has visited mammalpur himself or herself so you leave this question because if you are not able to solve such detailed questions it is not going to cost you a lot you move ahead most of the candidates will not be knowing next now this question i will be using the similar logic from the madurai question which i explained previously this is about this is directly from irfan habib sir's book indian medicine of greco arabian tradition was almost identical in practice with the contemporary persian medicine now this is okay okay it looks good okay we it is identical almost identical to persian it is an open statement and yes uh, greco arabic tradition uh, there were a lot of uh, north west invasions in india uh, and medieval india was also uh, the delhi sultanate and the moguls everything came from the uh, persian side so it is all right yeah it can be identical things even the uh, iktidar system that was also not indigenous so these kind of things yeah it's all right it is it can come from there so even medicine can come from there if administration can next is harvey's discovery of the circulation of blood was explained to scholarly noble by european traveler franco bernier now franco bernier does re, uh, ring a bell because it is in the ncert but this particular statement is not given there okay but it makes sense that franco bernier was in medieval india we know that and this can be a copy statement from a particular book the examiner may not take the effort to change the name or change any sentence the third is the practice of smallpox inoculation now this is where my eyes raise inoculation of smallpox was described in the contemporary ayurvedic and unani methods now ayurveda gave a treatment for lot of things we had lot of surgeries during gupta empire and all that but smallpox inoculation came somewhere in the 1800s or 1600s it came very late it was not a part of medieval india for sure so it was somewhere around 18 and inoculation means you properly cure it and that is something which india had not achieved by that time so this statement will be wrong so the answer will be two two statements are correct this is how we approach next is a polity question this is a question where i want to explain that that yes uh, option b and option uh, this uh, sorry a and b they do look similar for gandhi and bose but you need to understand that which of them is more appropriate in the exam if you read the first page the very cover page of your question paper it says that there is only one correct answer and you need to choose the most appropriate correct answer so gandhi spoke more about swaraj than subhash chandra bose so i will go with that okay so b will become 4 so b will become 4 and c automatically becomes 2 i know gandhi spoke about equal distribution of wealth and it is all right but 
Gandhi spoke more about Swaraj and Subhash Chandra Bose did not speak very often on Swaraj. So we'll go with that. That is the way you approach. Then human being unlike all other objects possess dignity. This is from Kant and for me real freedom is freedom from fear is Aung Suu Kyi who was the Myanmar. Uh, she was a very strong leader and the head of state also for there. So D becomes 1, this becomes C. So this was the entire aim. I have taught you some questions. Uh, I'm sorry due to lack of time I won't be able to discuss all the 120 questions. But this is to give you an estimate or an idea on how to approach the questions. And I hope to seeing you for more lectures and best wishes for your CAPF 2024 exam. And we have about 12 weeks. So please start working hard, start preparing hard, give more time, more effort, more dedication. The exams are going to get tough. If you don't clear in 2024, the 2025 pa five paper will be much, much more harder because the UPSC exams are evolving in nature. They keep changing time to time and you need to update and upgrade yourself as per the changing nature. You can't rely on old laurels to conquer the UPSC exams every time. So the faster you get out of the cycle of these exams, the better it is for you. And I hope so you get out of these cycles as a successful candidate. Best wishes. Enjoy your day.